everyone. Good morning. Good to be here with you for our daily devotion. I'm the Reverend Sally Hubble, coming from St. Paul's Episcopal Church in lovely Healdsburg. Um, I'm happy to say it is less orange today in the sky, a little more normal looking. We are um, socked in by fog, and there's a fine coating of ash, a little sprinkling of ash on um, our cars and outdoors, but uh, it feels less smoky today, which is good. Um, I know that there are fires raging in so many parts of the West right now, and um, our prayers are certainly going up for all those who are affected right now. Um, as bad as it is to be under cloud and ash, it's uh, far worse to be under an evacuation order. So our prayers go out to so many people up and down the West Coast right now. So we are here for our daily devotions for individuals and families from the Book of Common Prayer. We um, always pray at this 10 o'clock hour from the devotions for individuals and families from the BCP, page 137. If you don't have a prayer book, no worries. Just uh, as I think I've been saying lately today and uh, this week, close your eyes and be along on the prayer train. Let us begin. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now our reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 17. I should get where it is again. I want to say 17 through 29, but that's not a natural break. 17 through 29. We're going to go for the unnatural break. <laughs> so we are continuing on right now with the story of the raising of Lazarus. And yesterday um, we had Jesus waiting two days before making his way to Bethany, even though he knew that his friend Lazarus was very ill. Um, and he tells the disciples that he's waiting to go so that the glory of God will be revealed. Um, in this moment. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, he went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. So... What we have here is a scene of Jesus being present in a family's grief. Um, and, you know, the very legitimate grief of their brother's death. And his presence among them is the resurrection and the life. And Martha believes that Jesus is the Messiah, 
that God will do whatever he asks of him. And yet in the midst of that belief, there is still grief. Um, I think the full unfolding, and especially the way we're reading this, you know, a bit at a time, uh, without the full raising of Lazarus, is in a way a lesson in and of itself of how time unfolds. Um, you know, I think we anticipate the future thinking that it's going to be a clear-cut moment, and yet it unfolds slowly, and um, our grief is with it, and we have to have hope that there will be joy also, and there is resurrection, and there is life, even in the midst of death. I think that's the true good news of the gospel. We were able, very uh, fortunate to be able to gather for um, an outdoor Eucharist service yesterday in the um, on the patio of the Paul Mater Gallery. And it's something that we're doing now on Wednesdays at 5.30, and that you're all welcome to come if you're in Healdsburg. Um, we're calling it Mass in the Moss Room. That's what the that outdoor space is called, the, the Paul Mater Gallery. Um, the, the scripture for yesterday which is also the scripture for Sunday, is about forgiveness. It's um, how many times should I forgive, Lord? Seven times? Try 77 times, or 70 times seven. 490 times. What are you going to do with that? Um, and I think what I didn't say last night in the homily, but it, it struck me so profoundly, you know, as that service was unfolding, is that the good news of the gospel is that we're proclaiming that there is life in the presence of the love of God, even when the sky is a scary burnt orange color and um, there are flames in the vicinity and um, there's a pandemic and there's scary stuff going on throughout the world. Um, even in the midst of great change, and when much of that change is painful or anxiety-provoking, there is the living hope of the gospel. There is the living hope of the presence of God in our love for one another. And that is huge. You know, I think that the kind of hope that the story of Jesus that the story of Jesus calls for you know in his lifetime and ongoing into our lifetimes 2000 years later is this crazy kind of hope that really doesn't make any sense you know Martha and Mary don't understand at this point that their brother is actually going to be raised from the dead in their midst and that there is a living hope for Lazarus that is not in the great hereafter, but in the presence, present of their lives. And I think as long as we can hang on to the love of God, which is most active probably in our acts of forgiveness to one another, um, as long as we can hang on to that, um, there is hope, even in situations of death. And um, this is a time that we really need that gospel message um, when we need to hear that there is a living hope in the dying world um, and in our own sadness and grief and anxiety. So uh, we have that in this story of Lazarus. Um, but as we read the story, you know, over a three day period, another important th number there, <laughs> um, it, we realize that it has to live for us um, over time. You know, it's not um, a sudden knowing or reckoning, and that's where faith comes in. All right, my friends, here we have our gospel lesson for today. And our gospel lesson for for our lifetime and for these times that we live in. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope.
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And as we begin our prayer time, I'm going to put my earbuds in because I'm sharing this house with two other people who are themselves on Zoom calls. And one of them is spilling over from upstairs to downstairs. All right, so here we have <laughs> hopefully a little better sound quality. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you this morning with full and searching hearts. Lord, we search for your hope in the world as we search for your presence within our own hearts. Lord, we give you thanks for the relationships and the love and the ties that you give us through your love for us all. Lord, we thank you for our church family, our families everywhere, for all of those friends, all of those people who are in our hearts and for whom we have concern today. Lord, I pray that you be with people everywhere who are affected by these horrible fires. Lord, be with firefighters, give them courage, give them skill, and we thank you for the call that you have put upon them to help us as first responders in this perilous time. Lord, I pray for all of those who are evacuated, all of those who are anxious for their homes, and all of those who have lost their homes. Lord, I pray that your peace, which indeed passes our understanding, surpasses our ability to understand, will be upon us all, even in the grips of loss and fear and anxiety. Lord, I pray that your compassion will flow through us and make our connections to one another deeper, more sincere, and more um, meaningful, more substantial as we depend more fully upon one another out of necessity. Lord, we pray for all of those people who are sick right now, all of the health care providers, all the essential workers everywhere. Lord, we pray for people who, whose lives are being disrupted now in the many ways that we are all experiencing through COVID, through fire, through evacuation, through air quality, the many, many ways that and the, we're experiencing disruption simply through anxiety, Lord. Be with us. Be with us now. Lord, we pray especially for those who have been commended to our prayers. We pray for John, Aidan, Autumn, Daisy, David, Deborah, Sylvan, Robin, Marjorie, Patricia, Bernie, Anne, Sherry, Tammy, Suzanne, Richard, Suzanne, Mary, Becky, Leah, Alice, Juanice, Alicia, Jenny, Mike, Lisa, Max, and all of their family, Lord. Lord, let your comfort be upon them. And be with all those whom we name now, all those who are resting heavily on our hearts. We commend to your mercy, Jack Meehan. Lord, I pray that he is by your side right now. We pray for all those who have died, 
especially those who have died in these fires. And Lord, we pray that you protect everybody who is in the fire's path. Protect the firefighters. And Lord, I pray that you protect us all from despair in these trying times. Be with civic leaders everywhere. Lord, I pray that throughout this government and every government, you help leaders everywhere to put the common good ahead of themselves. Help us, Lord, to truly recognize the needs of others and to see our connection to one another through your love for us all. Hear us now say the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, everyone. Good to be here with you. Um, so we are going to be having this Wednesday service at the Paul Mater Gallery at 530. We're talking with him also about maybe starting that at nine o'clock on Sunday. He would need to, um, the gallery opens at 10, so we'd need to do it at nine. Um, it doesn't, it, we can fit about 20, 25 people in there, which makes me uh, hesitant to make it a spot for our full Sunday gathering. But in this time of COVID, um, last week we were at um, Preston Farm, which is much more space, and we had 25 people um, there. So now I'm thinking that maybe we should just go for it. We, meanwhile, tomorrow, we'll be filming the full service with music. Paul is collecting our voices beautifully. He's collecting our imperfect voices and making them sound um, a lot more perfect, uh, those of us in the choir, uh, the way he weaves them together. So um, that is, of course, always an option uh, for everyone. And um, that's sort of still where like the, the great energy of the church is going into filming a full liturgy. Um, but we're still looking for opportunities to do the more abbreviated liturgy in person. We just don't have the real estate to do it because um, we don't have any outside worship space at St. Paul's. Um, and right now with the construction going on, we don't have a lot of <laughs> indoor space either. So um, everything is a little bit uh, thrown, tossed up in the air for multiple reasons right now. Meanwhile, um, I do pray that this finds you all well. And uh, knowing that I am connected to you in any way lifts my heart. Um, so thank you for watching this. Thank you for praying with me. And um, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, Linda Maxwell will be here with you. So, all right, everyone take care. Bye-bye. God bless you.